Thank you. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah, on behalf of uh, Kay, my wife, and myself, and my son Devin, wherever he's at, way over there, and his fiance Alex, way back there, we want to welcome you to uh, our little piece of paradise here. Um, and as we say in the book, that we, even though we legally own the property, we don't, we don't really perceive ourselves as as actually owning it. We're more like stewards of the property. We're stewarding it forward to the future generations, and that's what we feel our our obligation is, and we take that seriously. Um, what a, this this property has a uh, what we would call in the uh, conservation easement world a high conservation value. It's got uh, river frontage. We have uh, three vernal ponds. Uh, we have multiple seeps, a uh, spring that feeds this cold water stream here behind you. If you got a chance to look at that, you'll see it throughout the day. Have multiple soil profiles uh, and forest cover types. We have abundant uh, glacial features, uh, eskers and erratics, and significant lowland habitats. And uh, so, you know, if you go to any of these uh, tree farm meetings and, and that type of thing, the first thing they tell you that you need to do is to make sure you have a good access system to your property. Well, that's not really feasible here, um, and uh, you know we would we would compromise a lot of those those conservation values if we did put in a, a, a really good uh, access system. So, you know, we, our access is basically uh, by foot for for most of it, um, and so everything that we do we do by hand. Um, so it's a, a fair amount of work. Um, now I've never I've never known a tree farmer who who doesn't like to show off their property and we're we're no different. Um, you know we're we're just tickled pink to have y'all here. But I'll tell you after that storm in December, uh, we got a ton of what I would call wet cement, and uh, it just it just really plastered us. Uh, we lost a lot in that uh, age category between 10 and 30 35 years old. And uh, in the in the weeks following that storm, as I we took us two days to dig out to get out, um, you know, I looked at that and I said, "Boy, there's no way we can do this field day. It just looks like it looks terrible. It looks terrible." But then I started thinking, "Well, you're not going to judge us on on that. You know, the fact that we got the storm. You're going to judge us on what our response is to that." Um, but I'll have to tell you, at this point, we don't know what our response is going to be. Uh, you know. It, it took me half the summer just to get the trails cleared. Um, and so now we're starting to get access back to the property. When the leaves fall, we'll be able to, to assess, you know, where we need to go from that point. Um, now the topics that we're going to cover today don't necessarily uh, you know, talk about some of the things that we've, that we've done management-wise on this property and why they, why they chose us for the Outstanding Tree Farmer of the Year. So I just thought I'd spend a few minutes and, and talk about that. Uh, in 1996 through 99, we had uh, the Northern Hardwoods thin, and uh, John's going to be talking more about the, the history of the Northern Hardwood management in, in the property here. Uh, we do have a sale set up currently, uh, but it's it's difficult to get a logger that wants to come down in here. Uh, our neighbor had a, a thinning job up, up on top of the hill uh, last uh, winter, but uh, the logger declined to come down this this far, so uh, that was our probably our best shot. Uh, we do a lot of timber stand improvement thinnings uh, for firewood and for my mushroom business, and so you'll kind of see what we're doing with the mushrooms down there. Um, we do also salvage trees for personal use. We had uh, a big storm in 2019, um, a dry show that came through winter, and it actually stopped just before. Uh, our property line here, uh, although we did have a, have some wind, wind throw up there, uh, so we salvaged those trees. I, I built my shroom shack from from salvaged basswood. Um, we had a lot of hail in that in that storm, softball size hail that caused a lot of damage there too. So we, we've been hit by a lot of storms the last last few years. Um, bush honeysuckle. Uh, I don't know if, if you all know what bush honeysuckle looks like. But you saw a heck of a lot of it coming down Highland Road when you were coming down here this morning, whether you realized it or not. Uh, Ojibwa is kind of, it seems like it's kind of the epicenter of the bush honeysuckle invasion in Wisconsin. It's just all over the place here, and it was all over this property. 
And so over the last 20 years, we've been uh, diligently working at, at trying to, well, they're never gonna, going to eliminate it. It's, it's always going to be here. But at you know, trying to uh, severely reduce the amount of bush honeysuckle we have here. And, uh, and I, so I challenge you to find bush honeysuckle today. All right, if you find one, let it me know. It may be a prize. It may be a prize, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of, you know, we, we go out in the spring when the, when the soil is unstable because they pull real easily then, uh, and they're fairly easy to see because they leaf out kind of early. And then we go in the fall as well uh, because they hold their leaves into the fall, so they're, they're easy to pick out then too. So we hit them hard in the spring, we hit them hard in the fall. And uh, we've made uh, a tremendous amount of progress. Uh, it's been frustrating, though, I'll tell you, because you'll, you'll work through bush honeysuckle stand, and then you'll come back two years later, and there are thousands and thousands of seedlings that have come up from the seed bank um, that, that you just released when you, when you cut those bigger plants and got rid of those. Um, so it's a lot of follow-up in regard to that. Uh, we did... We, down by the river, along that the river trail there, if you walk on down the river, you know, if you play hooky and want to, want to you know, do some of the trails, we do have trail maps in there. Uh, just grab that and go for a hike. You won't get lost, I guarantee. Um, but down along towards the river there, we, it was a lot of brush, uh, not bush honeysuckle brush necessarily, but a lot, of, a lot of different brush species. In fact, it was so thick, you couldn't walk through it. You could crawl through it on all fours if you wanted to do that, but you couldn't walk through it. Uh, so we, in places then, we uh, have taken out that brush, uh, again, by hand. And uh, then I would mow it for a couple of years with my DR to keep to kind of knock that brush back, kind of uh, weaken it a little bit. And then we plant uh, white pine in there. And, uh, of course, we had problems with blister rust, and I would replace the white pine with more white pine, and those would die too. So I started replacing with white spruce. And then I started interplanting when I planted to start with, with white spruce. And so you'll see those plantings down there. Uh, I'll tell you, they took a heck of a beating with that storm last December, though. So they look pretty rough right now. But uh, hopefully they'll recover. Uh, at least some of them will recover from that. Uh, but we'll see. Um, we, have, we have a lot of, of lowland in, in this, on this property. And on that lowland, we have black ash. And I think you've all probably heard of the emerald ash borer by now. Uh, now, I don't believe it's here. I haven't seen any evidence of it, but we're trying to figure out what we're going to do when it does get here. And so in this swamp over here, uh, I cleared off a, 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 cleared a section of that, that swamp area and uh, with the idea of trying some things to see if I could get something to grow in there other than black ash. So the first thing I did was I, I got some tamarack seed and I seeded that in there, and absolutely nothing happened. And I talked with John Kotar. I don't know if many of, any of you know John Kotar, but he's uh, he's done a lot of a lot of work in Wisconsin on uh, habitat types. And he says, well, the reason it didn't work is because you won't find tamarack with black ash. Well, I didn't know that, so I learned something. You won't find tamarack with black ash, and you won't find black ash with tamarack. And so. I tried something different. We uh, you know, I researched and, well, I guess I literature searched. I didn't do any tests, but I literature searched. And uh, I decided on hackberry. So I got some hackberry and I planted those down there. Well, it was a wet spring and they all, they all drowned out. They didn't make it. So that failed. So now I, I know a, um, a guy that owns a nursery uh, over by Park Falls. And, uh, and we've, we've been talking, and, and he wanted to try uh, this, this tree, and I've been wanting to try this tree because I talked with uh, a gentleman that, that teaches at the LCO University up there, a botanist there, and he says, why don't you try bald cypress? You know, bald cypress is, is a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's thought of, commonly thought of as a southern tree, but it actually grows fairly far north, and he's been playing around with it for about 10, 15 years, and he says it's doing really well. So why don't you try bald cypress? So I said, well, okay, where do I get bald cypress? You know. Um, so I, I talked to my nursery friend, and he, and he says, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to see if I could grow bald cypress too. So he, he got some access to bald cypress, and uh, he's, he's growing those, and he's, he gave me a few uh, to try out here and see how they work. So this summer I planted bald, cy bald cypress down there. So either third time's a charm, 
or three strikes, you're out. Right? One, yeah. one of the two. Um, <coughs> Uh, we do uh, we do have a, a fairly good uh, trail system here. You know it's bumpy. Of course, the whole place is bumpy. There's not a there's not a level place, level spot on this place. So you always want to watch your feet. There's a lot of exposed rocks, roots, that type of thing. Uh, but we do maintain the trails. Uh, I mow them with my DR uh, in the summer, and uh, love to go cross country skiing in the winter. I see Tom Paulson there, Blue Hills Trails, um, and. Uh, I didn't have them open this last winter because I spent my time with Tom working on Blue Hills, <laughs> trying to get that one open. Um, but yeah, I love to ski, and uh, so if you get when you get on that geology hike, when you're on the backside esker there, that's my favorite run. So just imagine yourself coming down that that stretch on skis. Um, a lot of fun. Um, I want to thank all of our speakers. We've got uh, Kali Sip. And she's a, uh, a graduate of Northland College. She's now interning with the uh, with Cable Natural History Museum. Um, John Lovers, who was right there, I mean, he's uh, he's retired uh, Wisconsin DNR forester. He's also the chair of the Wisconsin Tree Farm Committee. And uh, if Frank was here, I'd introduce him too, but I don't think he's here yet. So yeah, he hope he comes. Hope he comes. Um, now, because of that storm last December, we do have some some issues on on the trails that I want you to be aware of if you see caution tape that doesn't mean you can't go through there but just stop take a look at why we have the caution tape there because there's a lot of things hanging in the trees yet every time we have a, a, a windy day there's more stuff that comes down um, so just you know stop and and take a look at, at why we have the caution tape there and just proceed with caution make sure it's stable before you go through um, and like I say, I got trail maps in the mailbox there if you want to uh, play hooky and just go for a hike. And now I'll turn this over to Kay. She wants to talk about food. She's a dietitian. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't keep you long, and it'll it'll be good. Um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you. Well, thank you all for coming today, and um, I share Gary's thoughts that you know we're stewards of this land, and part of what I like to do here is to do a lot of foraging and taking pictures of wildflowers. Um, I had to fight to get a picture of a trillium on the brochure. I don't know if I made it, but um, I've taken millions of them. But anyway, um, one of the other favorite things I do is collect ramp leaves, and I will have some ramp butter out for samples later on, so just you know, look for that. Um, we're also going to be doing some maple syrup drinks, and I think um, uh, my son's fiance, Alex, and maybe a couple other volunteers are going to be bartenders, but don't worry, it's you know, perfectly fine. It doesn't have anything spiked yet. Not until after the field day, um, for those that want to stay. Um, but anyway, we'll be doing a couple of samples of a maple syrup soda and a maple electrolyte drink that we really encourage you, especially if it gets hot, to drink later on. It's kind of like a Gatorade Propel substitute, but it's got maple syrup in. It fuels Gary through skiing season. So, um, so it has um, well, you know, Done, done a good job of that. So um, we encourage you to try those things and to just sit back and enjoy and, you know, feel free to wander off the path. There's a couple of overlooks um, that you can look over at the stream. And if you aren't able to do a lot of walking, you know, and just want to hang around here and walk a little bit, you know, grab yourself a map and, and um, enjoy your day. Um, this is all about enjoying and relaxing and learning. So thanks for coming.